Okay. We're gonna do probably a couple videos. The first video, this is my spare, and it's not holding air, so more than likely it's probably just got a bad O-ring in the rim. Um, these are paired 24 bolt Humvee wheels. So to do this job, you're gonna to need to take your wheel off the truck, which is seven eight socket for the lug nuts, take in spray all these studs down with WD-40, PB Blaster, whatever your preferred lubricant is. If the tire is not already flat, you need to use a valve stem remover. You can get these at a parts store. And really you need to do this even if you think the tire is flat because you don't want to get hurt. So you take your valve stem off. Take the end of this. It's two different sizes, so whichever size fits. Put it in here, counterclockwise. You can hear, yeah, see, this tire felt flat, it read flat on a gauge. And there was still a tiny bit of air in there. Probably not enough for you to get hurt, but it's not worth taking a chance. That's what your valve core looks like. <clears throat> You're also going to need a new O-ring. These I picked up at Eastern. They're two different sizes. The fat one here I've used before for these paired 24 bolt wheels. This is the other one that they gave me that they had there's the part number on it this one here I would consider red and this one I would consider orange in color although I'm sure they refer to both of them as red or both of them as orange so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to need to take an impact gun with a three-quarter inch impact socket and undo all these all the way around you can undo them in a pattern or however you think you need to undo them this is the pattern in the book that you will torque them with when you put it back together so you could also use this pattern for disassembly there is the tech manual that it's in And there is the information on the bottom of the page. To do this job, you're also going to need a torque wrench. Because when you put this all back together, you're going to need to follow this pattern. You're going to need to torque these studs to 85 foot-pounds. And then you're going to have to re-follow the pattern and torque them again to 110 foot-pounds. So this is for the paired 24-bolt wheel. Your 12 bolt wheel and the non paired stud 24 bolt is going to be similar. Um, you're still going to have to torque them in a pattern and you have to torque them in that double sequence there. I'm sure in this same manual that I copied this out of, it probably also has a 12 and 24 non paired. It's also going to have something, help to have something like a tire spoon. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight and use these with tire machines. Um, actually, this has got the sticker on it, maybe. 24 inch tire iron. Made in India. And. There's your part number, 93230. Now on these wheels you may have to start with breaking them loose with a breaker bar if they've never been done before. Um, you're going to want a decent impact gun. This is my smaller gun and I've got air ones and I've got a bigger DeWalt. So we'll see how this goes. 
Yeah, so the smallest half inch, the smallest half inch gun we have for DeWalt and 20 volt max brushless, didn't really want to do it. So we're going with the medium size gun. And obviously we've had this wheel part before, the studs aren't rusted. Okay, so now that we've got all this, the uh, nuts off of the split rim studs, you throw them on a magnet tray and try and keep dirt off of them and stuff. We're stuck working outside with this. Um, some of your rims, this one doesn't have it, but some of the rims, I think it might only be the 12 bolt, the newer 12 bolts, they actually have an alignment hole just randomly on the rim somewhere. So when you put it back together, you got to make sure to line up the alignment hole. Um, you should be able to take this tire iron bar and use one of the sides and it should pretty easily be able to pop that off of there try the other side of the bar it's got the like I said we've had this apart before hold on okay so this one didn't really want to pop, so we ended up needing two bars. You take one, stick it under there, and spread that open a little bit. You take the second bar, shove this part in to there, just to hold it, and then take the first bar and get a really good bite with it, and the ring, it just pop, the rim just pops right off. Then. So, it's off. You know, you're just breaking the seal, that's all it is. I've also seen guys put the lug nuts back on, and um you know part way and put air to it and it'll blow it apart too it'll blow the seal i just i'd rather pop it off if i can it's a little more controlled so here's your o-ring sitting in here this o-ring's it's pretty filthy actually we may have just gotten a lot of crap on it when we put the wheel back together originally because we're trying to get done and then this side of the rim is just flat, so it might be a little scunged up too. It might just be a matter of pull the o-ring out, clean the o-ring, put it back in. But seeing as how we have this apart like this, it may say screw it and just put the uh, put the new o-ring in. Because it is a bit of a pain in the ass and time consuming to pull this all apart, put it back together, and then go around on 24 bolts two times torquing with the torque wrench, doing the pattern to put it back together. So here's your here's your O-ring. It just pulls off of here. You can see there's a groove inside the rim on these 24 bolts at least there is. And we may or may not have replaced this O-ring. This O-ring is actually triangle shaped. So it's got three flat sides. I don't know if it is like that from being in the rim. It's just taking that form from being pressed into that groove. Or if it's like that from the factory intentionally. Because I believe when we bought these 20, we bought five of these wheels. And every one of them had a triangle O-ring in to begin with. So... They said, I don't know if that's just been formed that way from being stuck in the rim for so long or if it actually came that way. But all the new ones around that we've gotten. All right, so when you have the rim apart, it's a good time to check it for damage, the rust. This rim doesn't have any rust. There is this here on the outer lip. It's probably from a wheel weight that used to be on there. Shouldn't really affect anything. The part that's probably, other than this lip here, this inner lip right here, um, this area here is important that it's not really damaged because that's where your o-ring sits um, to seal the rim. So we clean this up real good in water and uh, it looks pretty good now. 
the other part here, we wiped all this down real good. It's probably hard to see because of where we are in the sun. But there are a couple little spots. There's a, a very small nick right here. And I think I found one somewhere else in here. I don't know that they're affecting anything. But I guess if we continue to have an issue with this rim, either there's a hole in the tire that we don't know about, or you know, these little nicks in the rim are causing it to leak. Um, you also want to make sure that these mating surfaces on the tire, that these are wiped all clean. So I think last time we put this together, we probably used um, like some petroleum jelly, something like that to hold the um, to hold the o-ring in place, which I guess was counterproductive in the end because obviously it just acted like glue and grabbed every little bit of dirt that it could when we were assembling the wheel. Okay, so we're gonna end up using the fat o-ring. It just sits in there. Um, sometimes when you take these wheels apart, when you split them apart, the o-ring won't go back in place. Um, you're supposed to replace the o-ring every time. I've reused plenty of o-rings and I haven't not had an issue with the actual o-ring. Um, but what will happen is they'll pop out and they will have somehow become oversized. And they won't fit back in that groove. So this fat one is sitting nice in the groove. I've used the fat ones before on this. The problem I'm having with the skinny one is because it was all twisted up in that little package for so long, it's staying all twisted up. So we got another wheel to do. We're going to leave it sit in the sun. Hopefully it straightens out. Um, if not, then I'm probably just going to have to leave it lay somewhere for a while to flatten out. I'll just use them later on other wheels. Okay, so if your rim does not have an alignment hole, you and you're running your run flats, the run flats have a spot in them for the valve to line up with. So you gotta look for that spot when you put the rim back together. All right, so when we go to put this back together, we actually take a piece of cribbing block like this and lay it inside the rim. That way the tire itself is up off the ground to make sure that the uh, rim is the inner rim is seated and then we'll set the o-ring in there set the plate on there in the right direction it needs to be to line up with if there's an alignment hole or to line up with if you have a um, you know run flat with a valve stem hole then we go around and we'll put We'll just hand put four nuts on, one, one in each corner, and then we'll take the impact gun, run it on, run it on, run it on, and run it on, and that'll pull. You wanna try and evenly pull all these studs through. And that way, this is together, the O-ring is not going anywhere, and then you can go back around and start hand starting all these nuts once that's done you're going to take the torque wrench go with that pattern go zigzag all around with the pattern torque it to the first setting 85 which is 85 foot pounds and then you're going to go back around and torque it to 110 the wrong page so there's your Paired stud settings, and there again is your pattern. So, hopefully, this uh, is helpful.